Does mouth taping make any sense? Um, apparently this was a bit of a TikTok sensation and uh, I was not in on that, but I've definitely heard about it and I think there's some pros and cons that we should really look at to see if it's right for you. The concept, and I brought a little, a little demo with me, this is uh, one company, so you can sort of tape like this or you can tape like that. And um, so if you're freaking out about, <laughs> there's no way I'm gonna put tape over my mouth. Um, appreciate the fact that if you're going this way, there's tape across your upper lip and below, and the center section is just, you know, right in the middle of your mouth. So you can, and this is stretchy, so you can actually open your mouth a little bit if you want to. So this is not literally like duct tape across your mouth in any way, shape, or form. Um, I've done it this way a bit. There's still room to the side, so you, you can see. And, it, and just in case you want to know, and this, I have no affiliation with this company, but that's, that's their name. So let's, let's look at the pros and cons. So when you're sleeping with your mouth open, what happens is you can snore, you can get dry mouth, and the biggest thing, the reason I got onto this is that with the mouth open, you're not swallowing your saliva, which is a big deal, and we're gonna go over that in a second, and you're proliferating bad bacteria. So there's bad bacteria that um, will just grow if your mouth is open, dried out, and you're not allowing the good bacteria to proliferate. So you're getting that imbalance, which is dangerous. And why is it that dangerous? So there's a particular bacteria called P. gingivalis, and it's associated with overall inflammation. So we know inflammation is the root cause of all the diseases killing us, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, um, Alzheimer's disease, obesity. It's all underlying that is inflammation. So that's dangerous. In addition to overall inflama inflammation, it's associated with respiratory disease, um, again, breathing through your mouth, is associated through, uh, with gingivitis, and something you might not know about gingivitis, we've certainly known about its association. So gingivitis is inflammation of, of the gums. So if you go to your dentist, they'll tell you if you have it. So we've known that a gingivitis is associated with heart disease. So heart disease is our number one killer. So obviously that should get our attention. And, and why is that? When, when the gums are receding or they're inflamed, they're allowing bacteria into your bloodstream. That, that's how it's happening. But this P. gingivalis is also associated with cognitive decline and Alzheimer's. So all of a sudden what's happening in this mouth is becoming very, very important. So what happens when you're breathing through your nose is that your blood pressure goes down, your anxiety goes down, um, it's protecting your oral microbiome. So you might have heard me talk about your microbiome a lot because so much has to do with gut health. So your gut microbiome is in your large intestine, it's considered you know, about 38 trillion organisms. I wasn't really appreciating the fact that the oral microbiome is just second in size to the gut microbiome, so it's that critical. And so my early work into understanding the oral microbiome, they were talking about, well, the importance of swallowing your saliva. And I was thinking like, what else, <laughs> what else are you gonna do with your saliva other than swallow it, right? Nobody's spitting their saliva out all day. But we sleep, or we should sleep, about a third of our lives, which is eight hours, sometimes eight to nine hours. And if you are not breathing through your nose that whole time and you have your mouth open, guess what's happening? You are not swallowing your saliva, it's just drying out in your mouth. And then that is associated with a whole host of these problems. And um, when I was thinking about the association with um, lowered anxiety with breathing through, through your nose versus your mouth, all the breathing exercises we teach people are a deep breath in through the nose and you hold and then just the air is coming out through the mouth. And that's how you shift from the sympathetic fight or flight into the parasympathetic relax. And that's, that's the part of your nervous system that of course you wanna be in the sleep so you can sleep but it's also not just for rest but it's relax and digest so that's a part of the nervous system you want engaged in when you are trying to have a nice relaxed meal so 
This came full circle for me when I was studying nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is something that you produce in the lining of your vessels, but you also produce it in your gut. You also produce it in your saliva. So you need this healthy environment of the mouth to produce enough nitric oxide. Then, because your mouth is closed, you're swallowing that lovely saliva. It goes down into your gut and helps produce nitric oxide in your gut as well. So why is this so important for your health? Because with lowered nitric oxide, especially kicks in when you're over 40, because our levels of nitric oxide drop by 50% by age 40 and then down they go after that. So you wanna do as many things as you can to protect your nitric oxide level. Um, so with healthy nitric oxide, you are keeping your blood pressure low, you're keeping your circulation uh, not inflamed, so that's not just affecting your heart, it's affecting your brain, it's affecting your kidneys. Um, low nitric oxide is associated with Alzheimer's and cognitive decline, and remember, so was that bad bacteria in your mouth. It's associated with erectile dysfunction, male and female. All of this has to do with blood flow, okay? So for um, for an erection, both male and female, you need blood flow, you need engorgement. And if that doesn't happen, then you have sexual dysfunction. But then you want relaxed vessels <laughs> in other places of your body so you don't have high blood pressure and you're not having a stroke. Um, but also nitric oxide is associated with um, exercise performance, energy level. So it's associated with a lot. So hopefully I've made my case here of why you might want to try mouth taping. And um, so if you're freaked out about it, <laughs> I'm right there with you. When, when it was suggested to me to try it, I was like, there is no way. And I'm not a snorer and, I, and I'm not congested. And that's one thing you want to think with for sure. If you um, just can't breathe through your nose at all, then mouth taping is not for you. We want to get to the root cause of why you're not breathing through your nose and why you're so congested first. So that's number one. Um, but number two is there's a lot of protection that you can get from retraining your body to breathe through the nose. And do realize, as I showed you, this dropped on the floor, pardon, uh, our little H, um, this is not covering your whole mouth. It's not sealing. Plus it does have some elasticity to it. And this is just one brand. Uh, there are several out there. Uh, but I've seen some that are just more covering your entire, entire mouth, which I think might be a little bit much. So you can try it. It's not like on there with, you know, duct tape. It, it's very easy to, to peel off. I'm actually a little adhesive sensitive and I've been using this now for about three weeks with zero problem. Really night one, I, I had some like, you know, attention on the fact that I had it on my mouth and that, and after that, it, it was easy breezy. It was absolutely no problem at all. So I wanted to do this for a length of time before, before I talked about it because clinically I think it has a lot of benefits because um, nitric oxide production is very key for so many issues with circulation, mental health, emotional health, um, sexual health. So it covers a broad uh, screen of systems in our body. So let me know if you've ever tried it. And uh, if you haven't, I would encourage you to try it. Again, not if you're totally congested and you can only breathe through your mouth. Um, that won't be good for you. But otherwise, uh, give it a try. Let me know what you think. This company, um, Vital Oxygen, yeah, so that's the one I got. Uh, I think there are several others. But again, it, it's elastic, etc. So give it a try. And if you're, yeah, let me know. Let me know your thoughts. There's going to be a lot more that I want to talk about with nitric oxide, in, including finally a supplement that can augment our levels of nitric oxide, and that's very exciting. So I'll be talking about that soon. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe, give the channel a thumbs up so more people can see what we're doing. We're all about getting to the underlying root cause through what we call root cause medicine, which has its foundation in functional medicine. And uh, we have a team of doctors working together. We've been at practice for 40 years, and uh, I love to share health information.